Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa Sayyidi, what is uh, special about Fajr Awrad in terms of protection? It seems to be very effective at protecting against negative energies throughout the day. Fajr Awrad? Yeah, this is, uh, this is an, uh, a recitation, an etiquette is given by Sultan and Awliya that this is what the Sultan of Saints was given to recite and how to to pray to Allah from the recitations, du'as and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad So imagine the immensity, all of its secrets, all of its blessings and anytime you imitate a people you will be from those people. So as soon as we sit with the madad and the love and the ish that we're asking that, Ya Rabbi we don't know but we're, at, we're imitating the way of Sayyidina Muhammad that taught by the companions and Ahlul Bayt and our beloved shaykhs. That we don't know but they know, dress us from their intention, not my intention, I have no intention, I don't even know what the intention is Ya Rabbi. But my intention is to make you happy and the intentions of my shaykhs. As soon as you pray and do your Salatul Fajr according to the awrad, the way of the awrad on what to recite in between, when to take your… the sunnah in between the fard and the sunnah, you lie on the right side imitating Imam Ali Salam lying in the bed that he sacrificed his life for the way of Sayyidina Muhammad which is the sunnah Prophet would sit to the right side between the the, the sunnah and the fard. So it means all of these were the secrets of tariqah, when we follow them and do them then they have immense blessings. And later you can read the fiqr of the different recitations, SubhanAllah bihamdi, SubhanAllah lazeem, astaghfirullah. Prophet described anyone who wants to relieve difficulties for the day say a hundred times in fajr. SubhanAllah wa hamdi, SubhanAllah ladheem, astaghfirullah. Each recitation is taking away obstacles of that day. So by the time you study fiqr you would have realized, oh my shaykh already has that in the awrad, why I have to add it later by reading? So the shaykhs when we follow these perfected shaykhs every prescription and medicine is already in the prayer. All we do is copy and as we're copying later on we can educate ourselves to understand how much has been given to us of these realities, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah When we have an inner voice, does anyone hear that voice or what the West deems as thoughts? If I do du'as in my heart is it heard? <clears throat> Is it heard by who? E everything is heard. Somebody once made a comment and said they went somewhere and they said, oh the, the, the jinn they can't read. Uh, I don't know why anyone would say something like that. Their intelligence is far superior to ours. They can read, they write and they have a language completely something different and they have many different species and many different nations and very advanced in their technologies, their understandings, their abilities. So the concept of writing is very archaic and backward considering we have to do it as humans because we have not progressed to the level of using our heart. So any khatir and any thought that anyone has it already known. So as soon as you have a thought it's already known for people whom they have high level of perception. They can read a person just by the energy because remember we're an energy being. So if you separate your two, say I have my energy being and I have my physicality. My energy being is the one that is the control, the driver. Whatever that energy being d does, do you think it has to wait to the physicality and then from the physicality people understand what you're doing? That you put a function out and now people can understand? No, but your energy and your being 
is already sending its vibration, its intention and what it's about to do. So the person cannot move but they could be intending, I'm going to harm you and in their heart they say, I'm going to harm you. Well that's an entire message from your energy. So you've already sh shot that email out. So anybody with a level of perception can immediately pick up, this person is intending harm. So of course everything from our, our body, now when they say the jinn and, and different beings of their, their knowledge is very advanced so never underestimate your enemy or your opponent. Always assume your enemy and your opponent is much more advanced than you and you should always then win your fights. But in life if you underestimate who you're dealing with that's where you fall and you fall into difficulty. As far as our understandings and to bring our level of perception up, anybody who begins to meditate and connect their hearts with the shaykh they begin to understand that the heart is, is, is like a very fine tuned instrument and you're going to attune your heart with the shaykh. Remember anyone in music and anyone who studied sound, you can't attune with two or three teachers because you don't know who, who are you attuning with, what's your vibration. So imagine an instrument instead of you and you say, this, this instrument I want to play just like my master. So I have to make sure the instrument is exactly tuned on how he's playing. Not three people playing otherwise I don't know how my sound is coming out. So I attune myself to one as a result of attuning my energy and my frequency become the same as that one. I'm trying to attune and to perfect the connection with that one. As a result my energy starts to become attuned every time I meditate and connect the energy is coming to me, the understanding is coming to me. The thoughts are coming to me, then you'll understand our world. Without it people just ask questions like they didn't read the meditation book. If you read it and you practice it you'll understand the scope of what's being done because how then you could be sitting and, and having a thought right now in the audience and saying, the shaykh is answering all my questions, how? If you didn't say it. But the vibration is coming out and when we know everything is under tawheed, the same one who gave you the thought is also the same one who brought me here tonight, is also the same one who said, you're going to talk like this and you're going to talk about this. It's all from the same one, the one who brought you to sit and the one who brought me to talk and the one who brought us to listen is all the same one as a result of fine-tuning our reality and our connection, we begin to understand, no we should be connected to the heavenly source and the heavenly channel. As a result of developing that understanding we all become tuned in to their coordinates. And when these beings begin to appear then energy will be understood, that your madad will be understood, the vibration and the energy will be understood and they'll understand that you're able to connect and that you're able to break their system. So when they come across people whom don't have energy training that's how they do their paralysis, they grab them, they try to hold them with energy. But the whole concept is if you've been trained with madad means immediately you bring yourself into madad so you're asking for a power much greater than your own. As soon as the vibrations of the shaykhs appear they understand that you have an ability and they take off, they don't usually stay to fight the energies of the shaykhs. So these are all the energy trainings, we pray that Allah give us more and more understandings and inshaAllah after Salatul Maghrib we'll go over more questions if we have questions and then we'll go into the khatam inshaAllah. We'll break for Salatul Maghrib bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Ameen, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam. Amri minkum. And there was a reminder for myself and abdukallah, ajisu da'ifu, miskeen, zalim, jahan, 
and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that reminder always for myself that uh, these talks on meditation and our, our specialty on tafakkur and contemplation and ilm al and all of these, these are all essential for the days of difficulty that the meditation and energy training and, and this world of energy is essential for the days of difficulty, darkness and bad character, bad energy. That these things that affect humanity of negativity and unseen forces until they become seen, the only way of combating any type of negativity is bringing your satellite dish to be powered. So this whole system on the eleventh month becomes, Allah opens the heart for more and more understanding. If you think in life that you have ability to bring the power to you and that that energy just to come to dress you like a direct from the heavens into you like Superman, that's not realistic, that will not be attainable. And if you leave the presence of your shaykhs, you'll lose access to that satellite. If, if a shaykh casts you out, there's nobody to bring you back in. You can't hook up onto a different dish, you become blacklisted from that system. That's why they don't negate the hands of their shaykh. Once Allah bring them into that system, it's a matter of loyalty and training. If one of the shaykhs goes down, then there will other shaykhs will jump in to immediately fix the system because nothing goes down. Prophet will intervene and, and fix whatever needs to be fixed. But that system once you're brought into it, it's a matter of training how to clean, how to polish, how to purify and by, by example of purifying you're making yourself to have perfected mirrors. Because we're not a source of energy and without the shaykhs and without the tariqahs you're claiming you are a source of energy and that you can see how bad the mannerism is. Those whom don't follow tariqahs exactly explain to us exactly how will energy be reaching you. Oh no I take directly from Allah, the, the ridiculousness of that that can't be understood that out of all the Prophets only Sayyidina Muhammad takes from Allah And all the other Prophets are in need of Sayyidina Muhammad So there is nobody taking a direct connection from the power source. Everything then is by reflection from La ilaha illallah only reflects to Muhammadun Rasulullah and that's why on Isra'i wal Miraj Allah perfected the souls of all the Prophets by bringing them to Jerusalem and then to accept the physicality of Sayyidina Muhammad and then to make our salah which is in the form of Alif, Ha, Mim, Dal. And they prayed behind Prophet they gave their shahada and tashahud. And they accepted their Islam and they fell into the position of where they belong behind Prophet And as a result they were granted their miraj. So means everything is behind and in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah That mirror reflects to the companions to Ahlul Bayt, from Ahlul Bayt to Awliyaullah, from Awliyaullah down onto this earth. So everything is based on a reflection. When we understand that this is the reflection and this is the only way to achieve that power, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah aliyul nadeem. There is no help, no power and no help except by Allah the Almighty. This is a network of that satellite and that power. That that order has to come, Atiullah, 
atiya rasul and then boom out to ulul amri minkum. When Allah guide the students, He guides them to tariqahs. Go now, learn how to polish. Once you've taken the hands, it's like your satellite and mobile contract. Then they teach you give, give support, be loyal, participate. That's your monthly dues and fees for your contract. And as a result you meditate and fires and these emanations begin to dress, dress. The more you meditate, the more you connect, the more that energy from Allah to Prophet through all the holy companions and Ahlul Bayt is coming through a system. It's not thrown out for everybody. So there has to be a system and a discipline. The general throwing out is everybody receives a, a blessing and emanation. That's very different than this system of very, very specific power that comes into the heart. And they feel the energy, they feel the burning, they feel the quaking within the heart, they feel the contractions. People think, oh I'm having heart attack, I'll go to hospital. You're not having heart attack. You're having energy come into your heart and you have your body heating up and, and you have all of these are under their control now. With that energy that comes, you're able to begin to deflect energy. So when that energy comes to you, of course now you're at an energy level, means that you're communicating through an energy system. So when you train and, and, and meditate and practice with that energy that's coming, you're receiving now guidance in your heart and understandings, what we call the isharats and understandings. The khatir and the thoughts that are coming from that connection, that's how they teach. Is that you read a subject, you connect, you're doing your meditation and then these knowledges begin to reflect. As your connection becomes stronger and stronger, stronger and stronger, then the reflection and the understandings are becoming stronger upon the student and that's what's necessary. So that, that is the energy world that the tariqah is based out of. Now imagine other beings that are only energy, they don't need to write anything, they have, they have gone to a level much higher because they don't operate from the physical realm and they don't use a physical body. So everything in their world is energy. So you understand then when you're connecting you're sending a vibration, you're sending a thought. People are sitting at home and having concerns and thoughts but the shaykh is addressing them, the teachings are already addressing them. So then imagine how powerful the thought process is. Means you, the thought that you have and that you control then you have a, a power on it. The thought and the desire that you have that you bring into an action then that's something different. Once you brought it into an action means it's manifested. But the fact that you thought it and you're thinking of something doesn't mean that the vibration doesn't exist, it exists. And the energy beings they don't need you to manifest it to understand what you were thinking. So whatever people are thinking of course the shaitans and devils are there, they're the ones sending you the thought. So what do you mean how could they read your thoughts? They're sending you the thought, they're sending you the bad thought, they're sending you the pornographic and in inappropriate images, they're sending all of those things. How? Huh? Because we're an energy being and they are an energy world so that's completely their realm. So the ability to meditate and contemplate and to build your energy is actually so that you can push those beings away. Because you're now emanating at a very high frequency, it becomes painful for them to approach until the point where you build your energy so strong that you'll hear a buzzing. Means that in the vibration field something is trying to come into your vibration and you begin to hear very loud buzzing, a zzzz, like an alarm is going off on your energy and you feel very uncomfortable because in your field of energy something not of your caliber is now coming into your frequency because it's energy. So if it's higher you feel euphoric because their vibration is higher 
coming into your field and all of a sudden you feel the emanations, the beatific, you feel the fragrances, all of that which is beautiful because their vibration is so much higher. But in your meditation and energy, if something of a lower vibration is coming, you feel the agitation in the field. You, f you can hear it, you can sense something is wrong. So no, definitely this is all our training and this is the defense against this realm that is opening in dunya. As a result of your meditation and your muraqabah and your contemplation and the, the extent of the ability to connect, also you have now more encrypted understandings of your, of your reality. Your file becomes encrypted when you are in the tariqah, you wear your ta'weez and you make your connection. Because then the lights of the shaykhs are encrypting us and it's like an encryption. So those of a much more nefarious reality, they can't enter your light to get information on you. That's why also it's an alarm system. So those whom not meditating, not contemplating, then I don't know what they're waiting for, more tr traumatic experiences before they get motivated. But those whom are sitting and meditating, contemplating, the light of the shaykh is diffusing within them, encrypting their signal. So nefarious beings can't come into their light to find out well, who is this person, what is this person, what are they trying to do? Because we said before the lights of the shaykhs they're encrypted. They are mafuz as a result of being encrypted so the shaitans can't mix with their coordinates and, and can't steal from their information. So Allah has a, has a heavy duty system. If whatever you think of encryption and ledgers and nanotechnology and all these binary and NFT and all these, all of these are a sign of Allah's heavenly kingdom coming on to earth, everything. Everything will be locked into a blockchain, everything will, will, will be on all, all of these technologies. All of these are symbolic of Allah Everything in Allah's kingdom is not something moves that it isn't written by Allah Means there's a smart contract on it. Everything, every movement has a contract on it so that every movement of it is documented. So imagine whatever contracts and whatever knowledge is in… in, in uh, intelligence within the heavens, drops of it are now coming from Allah's kingdom upon earth. When that kingdom is coming onto earth, that's why all these systems are, are now being sort of brought out. It's haqqaiq from Allah What shaitan is trying to do with it that's from the dajjal but the, its realities are from heavens. So we pray Allah give us more and more understandings and, and more and more practices into energy and the people who practice the energy to ask more questions because those questions are motivating and, and pleasing to people that want to understand about the process and the depth of the process. It's hard to talk about something that people are not asking about. That's why you get timeless reality, you read it, read it again and again and then you get a copy and send it to a friend. Don't stop reading that. These are the, the realities and haqqaiqs of that and then the levels of the heart, the rising sun for the realities of guidance of the sun and the moon, levels of the heart for all the latayfs, subhanAllah, all of these realities are there inshaAllah. What else we got? Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam Uh, As Salaamu Shaykh, mm, how could someone recite verse or dua when the voice is made numb by negative energy? <clears throat> In your qalb means that again with wudu, with your tawees, with your madad before you do anything and you have your siwak 
and there should be no way that anything grabbed your voice. <coughs> so if all the symbols are there, all the foundation is there then yeah, you, I don't… I can't imagine with all that madha that something could grab your voice and get that close. <coughs> And your recitation has to be enough just silently for you to hear so that that energy begins to come out. But the madad and recite the, the madad of the shaykhs, it's on the app when you call upon the shaykhs and ask for their nazar and their presence to be watching over you inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa uh, There are two questions where families are putting pressure for the student to leave the path. So this brother has just uh, recently reverted to Islam. He's asking, uh, Dear Sayyidi, please forgive me for my ignorance. I can't speak Arabic, uh, but I'm 21 years young. Family is pressuring me to stop using the cane because they say I can walk perfectly fine. I've been ignoring them, but I'd like some advice. Yeah, you, you can just say that it's a, it's a blessing of the way of the prophets. And don't use it in front of them. It's not about, you know, having everybody to witness what you're doing. You can keep the barakah of the cane and pray next to the cane, have it next to you when you're praying and, and just uh, asking Allah to reward you for the sunnah of having a cane. If it's uh, annoying to people and you're still living at home and, and, you know, under the influence of other people then yeah, you should respect their environment and we don't want it to be strange for people to dislike the way and to dislike the teaching. We don't want to take something beautific and make it uh, something uh, s sort of uh, annoying to people. So we we'll try our best to be political and to, to use it appropriately. In the house you have it as a sunnah and say, Ya Rabbi I'm reviving the, the way of Prophet And then you can keep it in your car for the, the barakah of being in the car with you when you're driving and uh, not, not to use it in front of them just to be a, you know, to annoying family, we don't want to do that inshaAllah. And say the other question there, the family, the parents are attacking the tariqah and it's a really… They're, they're not Muslim and, and they're attacking the tariqah or they're just attacking the fact that the person became Muslim? Uh, this is the second person I think, Muslim family. Oh, uh, well, yeah, second person, if they're Muslim and they're attacking the tariqah then, you know, then there, there must be Wahhabis. So it's difficult, you have to just be patient and again not show it in front of them and if you're living at home there's not much you can do when you're under the rules of somebody else's roof. You know it's like living in a country that's not yours. So you have to obey the occupants of that house and, and try your best to keep your practices private and to yourself until a day that you have your own roof and you make your own rules. So. Nothing you can do if your parents are extreme other than show good character and good manners and the way of love and respect. And anyone asks me things, I don't know what I'm following, I don't want to argue about that, I just follow the love of Prophet that's it. I don't think anybody can argue with that, that no, no you shouldn't love him that, that doesn't sound good. To say, yeah, my tariqah, my way is the love of Prophet inshaAllah. Uh, as Sayyidi. <coughs> so, Sayyidi, can a woman serve her family with the intention of khidmah for the love of Allah and Prophet Yeah, women are only supposed to do that. So definitely women, they, they serve their family, their children, raise good children, pious children, mannered, good mannered children and Allah's pleased with them. Be kind and, and serve your husband and have good character and, and be a good example and role model for your children that they see that you have a love and respect for your husband and inshaAllah Allah reward you and that's a khidmat. And uh, there are stories on, on the awliya of uh, women, Rabbi al-Adawiyya inshaAllah qatta sallallahu siru that uh, is immense, immense awliya Allah. And that they serve through difficulty and obedience and, and good character, inshaAllah grant everyone a means in which to support and to serve people whom even serve their children. That they raise them, they take care of them, they, they, they teach them the deen and that's the greatest khidmat. Teach your children to love Sayyidina Muhammad what, what could be more beautiful than that? Feed them, feed them on time. 
make sure that they're washed, they're clean and, uh, and taken care of. So alhamdulillah this is a great khidmat inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam Is it okay to listen to Surah Jinn for hours as it makes me feel better? Yeah, I can't tell you after you said that, that you don't but <laughs> yeah the surah makes you feel better. Alhamdulillah all of the Holy Qur'an is, is beatific and uh, you know, try to, to listen to a good mixture of, of Holy Qur'an, Surat al-Yaseen, Surat al-Mulk and so alhamdulillah mix, mix them, mix them and, and uh, diversify your, your choices of surahs inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, I recently stopped smoking cigarettes to start meditation. Can you speak of the harm of smoke and medi meditating? The two are not the same, so they're, they're not going the same direction. Yeah, the, the harm of smoking is, is horrible, and the, the effect it has on the lungs and uh, the ability to kill people and uh, the ability to destroy the the breath and the breath of rahmah. Allah gave us the most powerful gift is the breath of rahmah, nafas al rahmah, the breath of the, of the All Merciful. So to take that breath and to burn it on the tree of life which is our lungs and then contaminate our blood, our lungs and our whole body is a satanic system in which to kill and to destroy people. The way is built upon the breath. So if you read the Naqshbandi guidebook you'll see that all 40 shaykhs describe the way of the breath. Our way is based on the breath. The one whom safeguards their breath means they're observant of their breath, the importance of the breath and their whole path is based on that breath. How it comes in, how it's purified and how zikr is achieved upon that breath then becomes the purity of their heart and the purity of their way. So the cigarette is like suicide, anyone who wants to destroy their path then you're burning your lungs, you're burning the tree of life and you're burning the breath. So without a doubt it's completely forbidden. Even the, the smoke of it coming towards people will contaminate their breath and the creatures that are on that smoke are all shayateen. And it's the, the body part of shaitan is in that cigarette and Allah will raise those whom smoke on the Day of Judgment with shaitan on their shoulder and that cigarette in their mouth. So means it's, it's very, very bad from shaitan uh, something that he brought onto this earth. All the carcinogens are all from his waste, so all the waste of shaitan is in that and the progeny of shaitan are in that and every time they inhale the smoke all those progeny are sent into the lungs to attack the person and as a result they become addicted to that smoke because the progeny of shaitan is within them through that smoke. Because remember they are of an unseen wind so their element is through that smoke the shayateen and the bad and nefarious ones, they move within and sun through that smoke and as a result they occupy them and begin to control them and then get them to do many other things once they're inside of them. So it's a great fight and a great battle to cast out those shaitans. Anyone who wants to stop smoking they take a big bottle or a big pitcher of water and recite upon it 40 surah fatihas. And ask Ya Rabbi from the power of Siddha Surat al-Fatiha by the secret and power of Surah Fatiha and the blessings of Sayyidina Muhammad take away this addiction from me. And as a result they begin to recite upon that water and drink that water every day. And when they want to put more water back into that pitcher then again they recite 40 Surat al-Fatiha with the same intention that that shayateen be pushed out of the body. And then they feel the, that difficulty to be leaving them inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how to identify when your ego or shaitan has mixed with the coordinates sent in the heart? How to identify when shaitan or the ego? 
Yeah, the coordinates that come to the heart should be for ibadah, not for guidance and to guide people. So when you want to see if coordinates are coming into your heart that, oh I should be reciting more, I should be doing zikr more, I should be sitting and meditating more, those are the coordinates you're asking for. If at any time something comes to you other than that, don't listen to it. And that's why you email helpme at nurmuhammad.com. If it comes, oh go tell those people this, go, go say to this one this, th those are not heavenly coordinates. Those are the nafs trying to teach and to give people coordinates and to, to, to guide other people instead of guiding the self. So the coordinates and real inspirations of the soul are always very heavy on ibadah. Go pray now, go go do another 10 rakahs, go, go sit and do your darara qirat, go, go do all your wazifas and, and your prayers. Sit and meditate and as soon as you connect with the shaykh and connect. Those things that are hard and the nafs says, oh I don't want to do that, I, I've got to go answer my email right now. But anytime it deals with trying to tell somebody, teach somebody, go point something out to some… No, 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 those are not from the, the soul, those are all from the nafs inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If we see the shaykh and hear him in meditation, then in normal activities we hear the shaykh and see his image, do we obey fast what the shaykh says to do and not do? Again we just said that if you hear the shaykh then it's a matter of hearing it through your ibadah. So I see the shaykh, um, he's talking to me and inspiring me, he should be inspiring you for ibadah. That go do your prayers, go do this or, oh, oh here's the huruf you were thinking of, knowledges like that. But no, oh, the shaykh is telling me, go tell Mr. Smith he's doing everything wrong. No, this again that's not from the shaykh. And how you see the shaykh is, is going to be according to your level. Some people they say, oh I heard the shaykh, I saw the shaykh came to me, talked to me like this. But we know that there's a series of questions that have to always be asked. Because how you see the shaykh is reflective of your character. Do you see them in complete sunnah that they have their turban, they have the beard, they have the jubba, they have everything? Then very rohani, that's something different. If, oh well I didn't know if I really saw the shaykh but I heard the shaykh, oh I saw him without a hat, or I saw him like this or… No, those are the imperfections of oneself because remember the mirroring. So someone is seeing an imperfection within themselves, they see the shaykh and he's reflecting their imperfection. So then those can't be listened to like that. The only thing that should be listened to is for your worshipness. Or in your knowledges, the shaykh is coming and he's inspiring with me, oh ya seen and I should be reading like this and this should be like this. Those, those are the inspirational inshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifu wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. بسر سورة الفاتحة